So we're switching it up today, back here in the Hunter Classic, we are on Pickaping Bay, and it really comes down to the size of the new Texas Lodge. We have so much space and the ability now to properly display at least one of every single species in the game. It, I was looking through what we have, we're looking pretty good across the entire game, every species except for Rusa Deer and Sambar Deer, and frankly our Bantang, Water Buffalo, stuff like that could use an improvement. So. We're gonna hunt around here, see if we can maybe get any trophies for the lodge. And that's kind of the new thing, this Let's Go Trophy Hunting series really just becomes every hunt. Because no matter where we hunt now, we're looking to improve that lodge. And maybe, minus the fact that it's not huge, this is basically an ideal start. And I say that because it feels like about half the time, when we begin our hunts at the South Lodge, we just get like six Roosted Deer does, get up to the swamp, and are no further towards actually getting some bucks. So 300 meters in, we've got a buck down already. Not gonna be a big one. We're looking for, for our trophy lodge, probably 170 plus. If we maybe get a 160, we could consider it for sure. But getting this guy with a double lung shot, almost max weight by the way, and a 123 score, definitely a promising start as we get going here. Man, I really hope I'm right about this. I caught a glimpse of what looked to be a pretty big Bantang I don't know, 20 minutes ago? And this track has just been miserable. It's been really hard to even find the next tracks. He's doubled back across old tracks multiple times. It looked to me like he was quite tall and it was just for a brief second or two. So we're gonna try to track him down. And if we can get eyes on him, we're definitely going with the 9.3. No messing around if we can get a shot. And this just continues to happen. We've got a female rooster deer walking right in front of us here. Now, for whatever reason, especially female rooster deer and sandbar, they're almost oblivious as you're walking around, but you can spook them. And we're finally kind of catching up to this Bantang. We're under 20 minutes. He's roaming. And for the most part, he's going in a straight line, which is the most important thing. He's done so much like back and forth, impossible to track, stuff kind of like this, where he just randomly veers off 90 degrees. But the good news is we went with the bow there. Able to take it out silently and just hopefully he's still around. That's our guy right there. He's walking right up to us. I thought he looked pretty big. We hit the deck immediately here. And I don't even know that we're going to mess around. We're going to grab the 9.3. Going to go ahead and aim. As soon as he crosses that tree, he looks nice. I think this may have been worthwhile. I'm afraid he's going to notice us. That's going to drop him. I don't know how long we track this thing, and I sure hope that I'm actually right, but it definitely looks to me bigger than our like 154, which for all the time pickup has been out, is the best Bantang we've ever shot, so I don't know, I think he looks good. A weight of only 756 kilo, 154.7, literally the exact same score as our best one. Not only that, the same fur, the, the one we have in the lodge is a 154 with this kind of orange coloration. I mean, it's not a bad one by any stretch, but they get considerably bigger. We may still taxidermy this. It depends on the decimal of the other one, but just out of pure annoyance for the fact that we probably followed him through this jungle in pretty consistent thunderstorms for around a half hour just to get that. And it ends up being almost a carbon copy of what's in our lodge at the moment. So if you thought I learned that Going for long tracks can lead to disappointing results. I have not. And we have basically the exact same thing here. Not a very big water buffalo. And he's going to charge us. Now, here's a max weight estimate. It's an awkward spot because we got to get this shot off just in time. Not sure if that was a brain shot because it was vital blood. It might have been a heart shot. It was indeed missed the brain and got the heart 200 on the nose. We're looking for, I think our trophy lodge one is a 277. What I'd ideally want, and is asking for a lot, is a gray variation, which isn't uncommon. Bigger than 277. 280 would be awesome, but just an improvement. Speaking of improvement, that Bantang is bigger than our last. We had a 154.3, I think. That one was a 154.7. So we will take that to lodge unless we can get a better one than that for the rest of this hunt. But I guess good that it was our personal best. Just, I, I thought it was a little better than that. That's not looking too bad. A 210 to 255 water buffalo? Still gonna fall well shy of what we're after, but definitely encouraging to find 
kind of a bighorns buffalo, I want to say fairly early on. Now, we're an hour and a half into this hunt, but we're really only just getting into kind of the better area for water buffalo. Down in this swamp is decent, it's just tough to really consistently encounter them. I find that once you get to the river part, you're pretty consistently running into water buffalo every couple hundred meters, so as long as he doesn't get into the water, he won't actually spook. We can essentially just run and get him to go aggressive. I'm thinking he might be too close to the water. Let's actually go 9.3. Rather than putting ourselves in another situation where we have to track something, we'll just drop him. This other one that was in the water, you can see he's already fleeing. I'm not exactly sure why that's a thing, but the only time water buffalo ever flee is from a gunshot or if they're standing in water or run into water when they're charging you. So we managed to avoid that here. I mean, you can see how close he was standing to it. I think we had to just take him out. And probably a 240s was a brain shot. 232, in fact. Even smaller than I thought. 1,083 kilo. Not a terrible weight for them. And we're going to keep on scooting up through here. I think we'll pass between these lakes. Try to go all the way up. And then we'll get into this area. Looking for Sambar and Rusa. That feels like we're moving in the right direction. 235 to 280 on that estimate. Not the gray variation, but a pretty good looking one. Now, again, he's right down there by the water, but I think we might be able to get away with this. And we actually just had another call from another max weight estimate one. I don't... That's gotta be him there. I don't know what we were looking at first. Maybe a smaller one? And I thought I maybe saw one other decent set of horns. None of those look huge. So in that case... If we get a crack at this guy with the 9.3, we'll probably just go that route. Just for the sake of being safe with this, because I do want to spend some time going after Rusa and Sambar. And of course, he went down over the hill now. There's all kinds of stuff around here. A couple of very unimpressive Bantang. Got more water buffalo walking around. And I guess at some stage, we actually spooked our big one across. But all the more reason to go with the 9.3. Hopefully, we can get him down and continue on. So, it's actually a good way he's standing. Got that front leg forward, we can hopefully shoot right behind it and into the heart, sending literally everything in the area running, but I'm actually thinking we may go ahead and fast travel. I've got a tent up here by this bridge. It's a good spot, I find it, especially later in hunts, and we're approaching the two hour mark now. Rusadir, Sambar, actually even Bantang and Feral Hog kind of congregate up there, so it's never a bad idea to just jump up there and see what might be hanging around. But with a minimum estimate of 235, this guy will definitely be our biggest of the hunt. 1155 kilo and a 265 score. Now that is a good one. Not quite as big as we're looking for, but always nice to get, I mean, almost 100 CSS. That's always an indication that you've got a pretty solid animal. So definitely worthy of a trophy shot. Not quite one we're going to throw into the lodge though. And always one of my favorite ways to take trophy shots when it's a bigger animal like a moose or a water buffalo, actually kind of lean in the gun on the horns or antlers, so kind of got our hand through the ground, but I think we're going to call that good. Got the gun reloaded, so if there's anything standing or right by the tent, we'll be good to go. Let's jump up here and see what happens. I'd imagine we'll hear something. Not what I expected to hear, but got a bantang down there, and definitely we need to be careful. I imagine there is more than just that. Kind of a weird looking one. And I think he might know we're here. He's 44 meters away. Definitely kind of testing the air there. If we can get this shot off, sure would be nice to get him taken out silently. Bit of a blind shot. We got him, I think, but not quite what we're looking for. Is that further back than we want? They have enormous lungs, so it may still be in the back of a lung. And there were a couple of deer down there. I don't think there's a male. So we might be all right, but let's check the blood. And then we're still going to just kind of hang around, maybe call a bit in case there's something else here. And I can already tell we don't even need to click on the track. Shot was too far back. Intestine blood, probably looking at a 10 to 15 minute wound time. So we'll just mark that. We'll come back to it. See if we can maybe get a deer from up here. So not a big Rusa deer, but the one positive is we spent enough time tracking him essentially in a circle that I think our Bantang should be down by now. So we'll just go ahead and pop this guy. Way more use out of the 9.3 than I thought we'd get today. I'm glad I grabbed an extra box of bullets. But you can see, we basically tracked right around him. Not sure how we didn't spook him. But I think we should be good to go and track our Bantang. And the one positive to that is, 
he ran exactly where we want to go anyway. So one little bonus rooster deer for our troubles ended up with a double lung stomach and head shot <laughs> somehow. 102 score and a 12 CSS, always good to see that. Let's go and grab our Bantang. And I think we'll even, I was thinking about just kind of run tracking him because I believe he's going to be down by now. But we might as well take that slow in case there are Rusa and Sambar over across the river there. So in the end, a couple of subpar kills there. We had our Rooster and I think 102. And this weird looking Bantang, gotta be one of the smallest males we've shot. Stomach contestant just 2-4 back. I mean 130 I guess isn't terrible. But not exactly the 160 plus we'd like to get. So we're essentially going to move down into this area. This tent used to have a tree stand. There's a pretty well-known sandbar and rooster deer spot, mostly sandbar, down in that area. And hopefully just passing through there without a tree stand can net us some luck. We got a rooster deer doe like right in front of us. Probably just going to try to sidestep that. Like I said earlier, they're kind of oblivious. It shouldn't be too hard to do that. We could not have been far from spooking this guy. Pretty decent looking sandbar. It really comes down to a couple of time measurements to really, you know, get a big one. Up to 250 on the estimate. And I think again, because of where we're at, we'll probably just go with 9.3. I have on many occasions tried to get one of these guys with the bow and just ended up spooking him and tracked him for an hour for no reason. So we're gonna get him down and I think as far as a Trophy Lodge sandbar goes, we're probably looking for something like 220. They get considerably bigger than that, but we don't have, I don't think, any sandbar deer actually mounted right now. And the ones that are, like, taxidermized but not actually displayed were shot actually prior to a scoring change. They used to get up to around 300 or maybe just over 300. That's not a thing anymore, so those old ones really don't kind of qualify anyway. I think the tines are decent. I don't know. Short brow tine on the left, maybe gonna cost them. Double lunged them there at 85 meters. 202 score, so shy of what we're going for for sure. And I think we'll continue to look for a better one. I mean, 91 GM, it's a good size sandbar. Just, I wouldn't say a big one necessarily. So we've kind of made it back down south here to these three lakes. And it looks like our last kill of the day may be another Banting. Now, that estimate goes up to 160. But he's definitely not as big as the last one we shot, so we're gonna keep from losing him. Kinda went down there into the trees, I think. Luckily, he's kinda walking back out here. So, interesting way he's gonna stand there. But that'll drop him. And while we didn't get any monsters here from Pickabean, I mean, a 265 water buffalo, nothing like using an extra med kit on our way down. A 154 Bantang, we had a 202 Sandbar, I don't think we ever got a decent rooster deer, but definitely cannot complain. For the most part, we didn't get a ton of harvest, but the ones that we did were pretty solid quality. And so I wouldn't say we're going to be back on Pick -a Bean often, but again, because of the changes at the lodge, we have a 131 there. Now we actually have incentive to try to improve our Bantang, Water Buffalo, Rusa and Sambar deer, those sorts of things, to therefore improve our lodge. But for now, we're gonna jump back to the Trophy Lodge, and see if we can take a look at our new, slightly improved Bantang. Now, is there a notable difference between this and the 154 we had there? Probably not. But I do have to say, that particular spot, a Bantang does look good just over there in that corner. I'd love to get one with a different fur variant, but that orange certainly does stand out next to our 277 Water Buffalo. So, like I said, more incentive now to go back to Pikmin and really to go to a bunch of maps to try to improve some of this stuff. And there's so many spaces, like, we've got several albino white toe in this lodge, this 56 scoring one, it looks nice there, but we've got a 98 above that, we've got a full body mounted one over here, I think it's a 162 or maybe 153 that said, there's a lot of stuff that we can maybe replace, and something like a trophy rusa or sandbar could go right into that spot, but anyway, that is gonna do it for this video, so as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.